Did you know that inside the arcade section of the cinema in the new map, if you throw down this specific pallet, this will happen? That's honestly a really cool detail and I wish Behavior added something like this for the High Striker in the Clown's map. Well, to be honest, you probably did know that, but what you didn't know is that the projector will actually work in the future. In the PTB, everyone was thinking that Behavior just forgot to add this, which would have been a missed opportunity, but it was found in the game files thanks to user Dweet from Twitter that there exists a texture for a movie that will play once you perform something that we don't know as of right now. This texture reveals that it's a segment of the trailer of the other DVD game, the casting of Frank Stone, more specifically this segment from the trailer. It is possible that the devs wanted to leave this easter egg out of the PTB and we might see it once the new chapter releases. Another really cool detail can be found on the opposite side of the cinema. If you go to the front of the statues in the plaza, you will find a tag made by both Michaela and Sable. Now you might think that this is just a nice thing that developers added to give flair to the map, but I think this is actually a very revealing detail about the nature of the map. It is confirmed by lore that maps are generated in their realms by being taken from the memory of the victims, as can be seen with the Temple of Purgation, for example. This causes the maps to be created in weird, unusual ways, as the entity doesn't recreate the maps completely accurate to the real-life counterparts. Well, in this case, most will assume that the map belongs to the unknown, as it's usual in the chapters. But since the entity decided to generate this small detail on the map, it looks like this time, this map is taken straight from Sable's memory, since she would remember that tag fondly making this, potentially, the first map in the game that belongs to a survivor rather than a killer. And if you're looking for an even cuter detail, just take a look at the cup that Sable is constantly holding in the lobby. At first, I thought that this was just a cup from the Moonstone Cafe, the place where both Michaela and Sable worked at, but upon closer inspection, I found out something interesting. As far as I am aware, the logo of the Moonstone Cafe is a cup with a moon on it, as can be seen in the charms and one of Michaela's barista outfits. Sable's cup, however, is filled with eyes and snake logos, which are the exact same logos that Michaela created as protective spells. So, in my personal theory, rather than this being part of the Moonstone merchandise, I think this cup is a gift from Michaela that Sable uses in order to protect herself in the entity's realm. Maybe a future cosmetic or lore piece might confirm this theory. And now let's talk about something that I don't see many players talk about, Sable's voice. For some reason, in the PTB, Sable Ward has two different voice actresses doubling her voice line count, as they both read the same lines. This could be a remnant of an old voice for Sable or a placeholder. The first voice is the one that everyone is used to. Fantastic. Super. This all feels very... familiar. Whereas the second voice, found in the game files, sounds like this. Fantastic. Super. This all feels very... familiar. The second voice sounds way much older and mature compared to the one we have in-game, and it also doesn't fit with her grunts of pain and screams. For that reason, I prefer the normal PTB voice way more than the one in the game files. But let me know what you think and if you disagree. But Sable is not the only one to have two voice actors in this patch, as this creature also does. But in its case, it's more interesting. By default, while you're playing as the unknown, or while you play against it, you can hear a combination of both voices which sound like a monster trying to emulate human speech. Sorry. This, is yours? this voice is a combination of both a male and a female human being. However, did you know that the moment you become weakened by the UVX, you are able to hear the unknown speak like a normal human being? In this case, since the default appearance of the unknown is a male, you will hear his voice like this. Over here. Is this yours? 
you, this yours? Not only that, as you probably heard, the unknown's breathing sounds will become grunts of pain. Now, why is this the case? Nobody knows yet, but going back to the voice, in the game files, there is a female variant of the unknown's voice that was found, which hints at a female cosmetic being released in the future for it. Take a listen yourself. Hello? Psst, over here. Help me over here, please. Why so nervous tonight? Life is what we make it. I will not be denied my happiness. I lived in dungeons long forgotten. And talking about the unknown's voice, it is the first killer to directly speak to us, the player in the lobby. And some of its lines imply that this creature has existed for ages. Other lines are way too personal. And then we have some lines where it's implied that this creature has some intelligence. For example, in the Memento Moris, the unknown seems to be teasing the survivors instead of copying another human. Which begs the question, how smart and evil is the unknown? Will we ever know? Let's try to answer something that many players dislike about the unknown. Why is it using an axe? Well, there is an actual reason as to why this creature is using one instead of using its arms. First of all, we need to remember that the unknown is trying to copy a human being, either by stealing the victim's possessions or by using tools in order to feel more human. In this case, it could be that the last victim of the unknown had used a fire axe in order to defend themselves, or maybe this was something the unknown simply stole from a past victim. What we know is that despite knowing that humans use tools, the unknown doesn't understand the concept of a fire axe. While it does hit survivors with it, understanding that this item will hurt them more, it uses the incorrect side while breaking generators and it completely ignores the axe while breaking pallets, proving that this item is just a prop rather than a tool of choice for the unknown. Maybe future cosmetics will showcase different weapons stolen from other victims. But another factor that could answer why this creature is using an axe is thanks to the nature of it. What is the unknown? Is it a failed military experiment? An alien? A monster? An evil spirit? A parasite infecting a human body? A demon? A killer? Well, the unknown is all of the above, and it seems to materialize everything we think about it as a reality. So, if one of the victims thought that the unknown was a slasher that used an axe to kill its victims, well, the unknown will become what you think. This is reflected on the add-on selection as well, as all of the add-ons are various theories about what the unknown is, which even includes a possessed game cartridge similar to various creepypastas, and one of the add-ons confirms that some of the victims thought that the unknown was a slasher that used a mask to hunt. Now let's talk about four random trivia that I wanted to share with you. The first one is that according to Sable's lore, she has a tattoo that is hidden in a very personal and private part of her. Just to give you an idea, this tattoo cannot be found in the naked texture of Sable, so I'll leave the location of it to your imagination. One of the teasers for this chapter, the one with the doorbell camera, actually uses the lobby animation of the unknown. Huge thanks to Nerf Lightborn from Twitter as they noticed this first. In the 10th teaser for the unknown, we can also see that this creature used to have pupils, instead of the dark void it has in the game. And finally, one small anomaly from this chapter. The code name for this chapter is called Apple Pie, as can be seen in the game files as well as the file names of this chapter's teasers. However, what is extremely weird for me is that Apple Pie is referenced in this chapter as part of the unknown's add-ons, as something in-universe called Project Apple Pie exists. So what is Apple Pie? Well, we don't know the answer to that yet. And finally, 
Let's talk about one very interesting contrast that the killer and survivor of this chapter have. As many of you probably know, Sable Ward willingly entered the Entity's realm once she had the opportunity to do so, as according to herself, she wouldn't let her best friend have all the fun. This makes Sable the first survivor to enter the realm without any of the Entity's manipulation or force, something that is usually reserved for killers like Ghostface or the Trickster. And then we have the unknown. While most killers make a pact with the entity like Sadako or Pyramid Head and others are manipulated by it like the Spirit or Wraith, the unknown was taken by the entity in a different way. It was literally stolen by it. The unknown's lore talks about Olivia, a researcher who wanted to know more about this creature and the mysteries surrounding it. By the end of the story, we can see that Olivia was just about to be hunted by the unknown. However, while doing that, the entity decided to take this creature to its realm by force. The last thing we know about the unknown is that it has fought and lost against the entity. So, this creature is potentially pissed at it, which is a huge change compared to the past killers released in the game, as they all show some kind of appreciation to the entity. In fact, one voice line kinda reveals that the unknown could be trying to fight against the entity. I will not be denied my happiness. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.